Hey, what's up everybody? This is Chris from PCRX. So today's video has kind of been a long time coming. Uh, it's going to be an update for the Azeroth BIOS. So last time we talked a little bit about what the BIOS had in it and whatnot. Uh, but today we're going to talk about updates to the BIOS because there's been a couple since uh, the last version that we showed. And we're also going to talk about the process of how you go about updating. So there's going to also be a couple links in the description below because there's um, there's links to the site of where you can get the files as far as updating for the BIOS. And then there's also a link to a really awesome forum that has had basically all of the updates listed. So let's start off with the BIOS updates here real quick. So there's been, as I said, a couple updates. So they still don't list version 2.20. So we're on 2.5 right now, and I haven't actually updated it yet. So I'm gonna show that in the video today as far as uh, updating process. So this is listed as version two, but it's actually version 2.2 because this is for the other motherboard, the AB350M. And this isn't, I don't believe this is the Pro 4 either. So this must be a new motherboard, but but that's besides the point. So it's still the same version or the same update as 2.2 for the Pro 4. They just don't have it listed anymore. As you can see, they only have version 2.5 here. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit too. So version 2.2 for the Pro 4, once again, like I said, ignore this version number because this is for a different motherboard, but it's the same update. So it applies to any of the ASRock 350 boards. So it contained a couple of updates. Um, Number one, it up updated the, however you pronounce this, this is obviously an acronym, a GESA or A-G-E-S-A to version 1004A. So what does that even mean? So a GESA or A-G-E-S-A, however you're supposed to pronounce that, uh, it stands for AMD Generic Encapsulated Software Architecture. Yeah, it's one hell of an acronym. So basically what that does is it's a bootstrap protocol and it kind of initializes system devices and stuff. So I'm assuming the update is probably for certain uh, certain software and uh, system devices that weren't included in the initial update or the initial BIOS. Uh, so number two, it also supports uh, DDR4 voltage control and Ryzen Master, which is nice to have because if you have the Ryzen Master program, which uh, you can do a quick Google search of that. If you're not sure what that is and you have Ryzen, yeah, it's a really nice overclocking uh, tool here and it's all GUI based and it's really nice to use for most of it you do have to have a certain setting on HPET but it works as far as the basic settings without having to have that on um, that's kind of more in-depth stuff as far as whether HPET is worth it having on for the settings and whatnot so I'm not going to talk about that specifically today but it is there and I'll post the the links to all of this stuff uh, below in the description here if you are interested in using Ryzen Master for overclocking or whatnot instead of your BIOS, or just for viewing system information. So anyway, moving on to the third part of the update was uh, precision boost and it adjusted clock speeds. You could have basically really small increments, 25 megahertz increments in the BIOS setup, which was nice to have because you can get more precise, hence the precision boost. So uh, that was basically the update for 2.2.0. Uh, and the most recent one was here on the 26th, so just about a few days ago here. Well, this one was over, looks like over a month. Um, so 2.5.0 updated AGISA again. Now it says version string summit PI AM4 1004A. So it's the same version number, however, it has summit. Now I can only conclude that that is for uh, summit ridge which Summit Ridge is AMD's upcoming APUs. So it looks like BIOS updates are being pushed support for APUs. So I haven't done any news searching as far as when that's supposed to come out. So I'm not actually aware. If you're aware of when it's supposed to come out, uh, go ahead and post in the comments. Uh, but the APU is basically, uh, it's a CPU that's, that has a video output as well capability. And that's why all the motherboards have output for video, even though they don't have onboard video chips, because you have to have an APU for that to work, which those are not out yet, but they should be soon according to this update. Uh, so that's kind of the updates as far as what uh, this motherboard in particular has 
received, and I believe all of them, even the fatality board and uh, some of the micro boards have received basically the same update, but they will be a different version number. So the other thing we want to talk about here uh, is the site that lists all of them. So if you have any of the AM4 motherboards, this site right here, which is hardform.com, it's basically lists links to all of your BIOS updates, which is awesome. I mean, it lists it for every single brand too. And I believe most of them, if not all of them are here. And if not, if they're not all listed, I'm sure that if you click one of these, it'll take you to the site and then you can pick a newer one in the list there. So for us, uh, this is the motherboard I have right here. So we go ahead and click that and it'll take you right to the site and that's the update you want. So talking about updating. So I actually had a couple of questions about how you go about updating. And I actually had a recent question about why is it important to update your BIOS? So we'll, we'll talk about that real quick. So BIOS basically is your motherboards. Think of it as like motherboard software that talks to your hardware. So you want that to be updated as frequently as possible if you need to, because if you don't need to update and it's some update that doesn't really pertain to you, then you might not want to because updating your BIOS can potentially cause bricking. It can break your motherboard if you do it something, uh, do it the wrong way. So unless you absolutely are sure that you need it and you feel comfortable doing it, go ahead and do it because most BIOS updates are fantastic and they add features and whatnot like you saw as I showed for uh, version 2.2.0. So anyway, that's that's kind of in a nutshell why you need BIOS updates. Uh, you can do you know Google search as far as if you want more in-depth information as to what a BIOS is and how it works and everything. But it's it's definitely a good thing to update it, especially since we're on a really new platform. Uh, AMD or AM4 from AMD is still somewhat in its infancy. So uh, the other thing we wanted to talk about, the last thing here, is the update process. So there's three different ways you can do it as far as I'm aware of for these motherboards, kind of three and a half. So step one would be to go to your link here that you have to download for the BIOS. And what you would do is you click which region you're at. So we're in the US, so we click that one. It will give you a download here. And the first step or the first option rather is to install via GUI. So you should be able to install this as a setup file and then it should install from the desktop. So there is a second option and the second option and the third option we're gonna have to restart the computer here and switch on the camera because I can't use OBS to uh, to record the the BIOS obviously because Windows isn't running. So the other two options, number two is update through a file and the file that you download is actually the BIOS file. And you put it on a flash drive or some sort of removable media that your, your motherboard can read and you plug it into your computer and you can either install it from the BIOS or you can do what's called instant flash, which you plug in your chip or whatever you're using to put this on, your flash drive. Uh, and then you press a button on the keyboard, most of the time it's F6, and it'll install straight from it. We actually had to do that with the MSI motherboard we have because it wouldn't actually post at all without an update. So, and the last option is internet flash. And a lot of these motherboards, actually I believe all of them have internet flash. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart the computer. We'll switch over to the camera and we'll show you how to go about doing that from BIOS. All right, so I actually have to apologize. So the file that I told you to download, which is uh, this file right here, this is actually not an EXE. This is actually just the BIOS file. So this one can only be used for one of the two other options, which is put it on a USB and install through the BIOS, or you can put this on a flash drive also and use instant flash by pressing F6. So if you need an EXE, this is not it. There is a previous version, which I'm not exactly sure how you get a hold of since they removed the downloads uh, button here. 
but you used to be able to get that version and install uh, via exe GUI on Windows. So this is not that file, so I apologize for that. So we're going to go ahead and restart the computer right here and get into the BIOS so we can show you the other two options at least. So you need to press F2 to get into your BIOS for this motherboard. It's other motherboards, it's different buttons. So in the BIOS here, now that we've restarted, the way you go about using the other two options is going and pressing up here at the tool menu. So we'll go ahead and click there at the tool. And inside the tool menu, it's going to list the two options. So there's instant flash, which you can use through here, or you can use by pressing F6 when you boot up, if your file, the BIOS file, like I showed you, is on a flash drive. And then there's also internet flash and network configuration here. So we're going to go ahead and click internet flash. And it should start initializing the internet connection to check for an update. If it does not, use the network connection uh, button below that, and you can set it up and make sure that it's connecting properly. So once it's done, it'll retrieve the information and it should show the next update, which will be 2.5.0 for right now. There obviously will be newer versions eventually down the road, but this one is the one for Summit uh, APUs to update AGISA 1.0.0.4a. So now you're going to want to go ahead and press update here. And it should start downloading the firmware. It only took me about a minute or two. It wasn't quite as fast as I figured it would be it seems like it doesn't get real full speed to the internet flash, but it's fast enough. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward the video here real quick. Skip through that. So now it should go to uh, actual updating of the UEFI. This process actually was quite long. It took about four or five minutes. It's about one of the longest. So this might be a bigger update than, uh, than it says. Once it's done doing that, though, it should say internet flash programming success. Press enter to reboot system, or you can press OK here and it will reboot and then you just have to press F2 again to get back into your BIOS. So now that we're rebooted and back into the BIOS you can see up top there we're on 2.5.0. So nothing else should have changed really but it did reset my RAM speeds as you can see here to 21.3.3. So I'm gonna have to go back into the OC tweaker and change that back to 21.3.3 or 2.6.6 excuse me 2.6.6.6. So that's pretty much it for this video. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up, and we're actually going to give away, since you guys watched through the entire video, we're going to give away three keys. Uh, they're going to be through Twitch Prime Loot. Since I'm not going to use them, I figured I'd give them away. So one is actually for NBA 2K17 in-game loot. One is for RuneScape access with Epic Extras. And the last one is for Star Wars The Old Republic Eternal Throne Ultimate Pack. So if you want one of these, comment below, like, subscribe. And the first person to comment uh, saying which one they want, we'll give it to you guys, one per person. Uh, so this has been Chris from PCRX, and you guys have an awesome day.